थैंक यू फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन टुडे इफ यू गाइज अ न्यू हियर दिस इज ध्वनी एंड इफ यू गाइज हैव बीन फॉलोइंग मी सो फार थैंक यू गाइज फॉर ट्यूनिंग अगेन टू माई चैनल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक एवरीथिंग पी आर पी वी आर गोइंग टू कवर वॉट इज पी आर पी द हिस्ट्री बिहाइंड पी आर पी वॉट डज द पी आर पी प्रोसीजर लुक्स लाइक थिंग्स यू शुड टेक इन केयर वेन यू आर गोइंग फॉर पी आर पी ट्रीटमेंट हु आर द गुड कैंडिडेट्स फॉर पी आर पी वॉट द कॉस्ट ऑफ पी आर पी लुक्स लाइक एंड वाई आई स्टॉप पी आर पी प्रोसीजर्स दिस इज द क्वेश्चन लाइक वाई डिड आई स्टॉप माई पी आर पी प्रोसीजर दिस क्वेश्चन आई गेट ऑन मोस्ट ऑफ माई यूट्यूब वीडियोज और ऑन इंस्टाग्राम मैसेजेस येस आई डू टॉक विद लॉट ऑफ यूर माई इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल आई लिव इट इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बट आई डू गेट अ लॉट ऑफ मैसेजेस देर एंड आई डू लाइक टू टॉक विद यू ऑल सो यू गैस या स्टे इन टच इफ यू गैस वॉन्ट टू मैसेज मी एनी थिंग बट लेट्स गेट इन टू द मीटी टॉपिक फॉर द डे so what is prp it's it's all the hype after the prp prp is being used for sport injuries it's used in facials it's used for hair rejuvenation so what exactly it stands for so prp stands for platelet rich plasma now plasma is the liquid portion of your blood and it is mainly made up of water and proteins plasma basically work as a medium for our red blood cells our white blood cells and platelets um uh, in our body so what does platelets help in so platelets are a blood cells that co- that cause blood clotting and also has other healing wound properties it's a lot of information here guys i i hope you guys are following along and it did take me a lot of time to research and this is my fourth try so yeah i hope you guys get answers so as i mentioned platelet so platelet has a lot of um growth factors Uh, that helps in wound healing and because of this in the history if we just look back some years um prp was mainly used uh, for healing sport injuries like ligament tears muscle joints um tenders so yes prp has been around us since a very long time it was just used in a different way and it is still used so a lot of sport injury uses prp for quickening the recovery process and it was also used during burns like to help skin recover faster when it comes to somebody going through a a burn but this was something it was being used and it has been around since a while and i wouldn't say recently but currently prp is also used a lot when it comes to hair restoring so prp does help to reduce or slow down our hair loss and also to increase the health of our hair follicles and our hair in general so let me talk about what does the typical um, prp procedure looks like and i'll also share my experience with it obviously before prp procedure i mean you definitely need to have a consultation with a dermatologist um, and do get this done with an of like a certified dermatologist um, get a consultation with a dermatologist do get your blood work done get make sure that you are a good candidate of prp and let's come to the day of prp now so i remember going to doctor's office at around 9:30 am in the morning i was definitely worried uh, i wouldn't say worried but i was scared because i knew that there are going to be injections on my scalp um and i don't know how i felt about it so yes doctor's office so i did reach the office and you are supposed to go to doctor's office whatever time it's fine the doctor or the nurse would start taking blood from your arm so typically for prp uh, they use around 10 to 60 ml of blood and they put the tubes in a centrif- centrifuge machine as you can see in the picture here swirl it around like at a very high speed and try to separate the red blood cells the prp and the poor plasma in the tube and the doctor or the dermatologist will take the kind of just take the the orange part that you can see it nowadays it's also called liquid gold um but they yeah, they will take the prp um and they they will uh they will have the injections ready so i remember having around 25 to 30 pokes in my scalp so before that so many dermatologists actually do add on growth serums to prp the very famous one is like acel matrix so they will add prp and acel matrix together to boost the prp itself in my case i think um, there was nothing added to prp it was just my blood uh, plasma or my plasma or my prp getting injected back to my scalp 
so one more thing is like a lot of a dermatologist do give you a topical numbing or they would add certain local anesthesia into the injection so whenever they do a poke you feel the poke but after that it goes all numb i just felt pressure and some kind of liquid flowing in my scalp it was a weird feeling um and i remember that i did take my friend for as a you know moral support for me for prp but i think she was more scared because she was seeing the pokes happening whereas in my case i was not seeing and i was not even feeling because of the anesthesia so some dermatologists do prefer giving you anesthesia whereas some dermatologists don't it depends do ask your dermat what the procedure is going to look like for you uh but yes um i had 20 to 30 pokes i think the entire procedure didn't take more than 30 to 40 minutes i think 40 minutes stops so once i was done with all the 30 pokes in my scalp my scalp felt heavy as if like i'm having a heavy helmet on my head uh and i didn't have a headache at that point in time so usually the anesthesia wears off um uh, at around 2 to 3 hours mark and after that i did have a headache um uh, for the very first time i did the prp i did three prp treatments so the very first time when i did my prp once the anesthesia worn off i did have a headache which didn't happen for the next two. i don't know why it happened for the first time and after your prp you are not supposed to wash your hair for 24 hours um and on the very second day i was very fine i didn't have any headache i didn't have a heavy head feeling so it was fine from the second day onwards but the very first day i did have a headache now make sure that when you're going for a prp treatment you don't have caffeine you don't have alcohol um or any kind of blood thinners like um any painkiller sometimes thins out your blood uh, caffeine also does the same thing so try to avoid these things before your prp treatment um yeah this is just one of the things i was reading up and this is one of the thing that i followed up on now there are few candidates who are not good for um prp like people who are been diagnosed with a chronic disease so do talk to your dermatologist to make sure you're a good candidate for that as well and now let's come to the cost of prp which is one of the main concern for many of us here so i do stay in california in bay area and where i stay the prp cost looks like for single session it it's the it's in between the range of like $500 to almost $1500 it might have changed i'm not aware but i did end up paying like $650 per session and prp is a maintenance treatment so most of the dermatologist will ask you to come for three back to back sessions and those like you have first session you will have four to six weeks in between you have a second session Four to six in be- four to six weeks in between, and then you have your third session. And after this, this three sh- sessions are done. You need to go for maintenance treatment every six to eight months. In my case, I stopped going for maintenance treatment, and we will come to that why I did that. But let's see. But let's talk about what results I saw. So, um, PRP the way it works is like, um, it will help your inactive. hair follicle to come to an active state so for most of the androgenic alopecia which is basically the male pattern hair loss or female pattern hair loss what starts happening is like a follicle will miniaturize so much that the hair coming out from that follicle would be super thin uh, and what prp would help is like it will start making that hair follicle healthier so your hair would start looking shinier fuller thicker and this is the thing that i experienced uh, personally so most of my injections were in this side and this is where i have the most hair loss as well like in this area and i did see a lot of um i i felt fuller hair like um and i'm i'm not bullshitting here like this is my personal experience i don't have before and after pictures to compare with uh, but that is i did feel that the hair was bit more thicker shinier healthier and it was not frizzy um and i used to keep and i have curly hair and it was going back to curly so it was a positive result and i haven't seen positive results in many hair treatments that i've done but prp definitely had positive results um and do let me know that what your results look like if you guys have gone through prp do uh comment down your experience with prp your results with prp but this is my this are my results i felt like my hair did have a positive impact because of prp but now comes the main question why i stopped prp so honestly i did this three back to back sessions just before quarantine and during the quarantine i mean obviously all of us were in the house and all those things so i 
didn't go for maintenance sessions and that has been two years and I haven't gone for maintenance sessions so far. Um, I don't know if I am scared of syringes or I don't know what's happening. But if somebody asked me, will I do PRP again? I would say yes. I just don't know when. Because I know that PRP treatment, it's, it's pretty heavy on maintenance and I'm not sure of myself when it comes to having procedures that are, you know, you need to go for periodically. But, and also I think somewhere down the line, I am scared of the syringes again, but trust me, a lot of dermatologists used anesthesia and we don't feel like the pokes are happening in the scalp. If I end up going for PRP, I will let you know. I'll probably just film the entire experience. Uh, might be bloody, might not be able to do it, but <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. So that is all for today, guys. I hope you guys liked the video. It did require a lot of research and a lot of trials to film this video today, uh, but I hope it was all worth it. Do let me know in the comment box what your thought processes are. Feel free to message, message me on a personal Instagram. I usually post my workouts, travel, everything non-serious there. Um, I wouldn't call it non-serious, but my normal life. Like uh, for me, life is much more of than hair. Hair is just a part of life. That's how I see it. So my personal Instagram is more about daily life, getting ready, going out and all those things. So feel free to message me there and like the video if you guys like it and do subscribe the channel so you guys are posted about all the new content I'm going to put out. Do let me know the kind of content you're, you want to see on this channel and share it with anybody who you think would this video would be helpful. Till next time, always be beautiful you lovelies. Bye.